Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden in Somerset. It's time for our December garden tour. I've got no idea where the last few weeks have gone. It's gone by really quickly. Um, I'm going to show you around today and we can get started on some of those winter jobs as well while I'm putting the garden to bed. Um, but you'll see that we're still in quite an autumnal state. We haven't lost all of the leaves yet, but we can do a bit of tidying up uh, where the leaves have fallen on the lawn. But I wanted to start here because our bulbs are coming up already. Um, and these are daffodil bulbs that are appearing through uh, the soil. And I planted these a month or two ago. Um, it feels like it's really quick to see those already, but um, very reassuring because it means we've got lots to look forward to as we go into late winter, early spring. Um, so let's go up the garden and we can get started with looking around. Uh, I thought we could stop here for a minute because bizarrely we still have roses and even a delphinium flowering um, in December, which is very bizarre. Um, but this is Cinderella delphinium and I didn't have any luck with this one in the summer and it started flowering uh, in November, I think, and it's come back again for a second flush really late in the year. Uh, and then Olivia Rose Austin is still giving us some roses. A lot of roses actually. There's going to be another flush it looks like. I can see about five buds on there already. Um, I will be pruning this soon for winter so I'll be taking all the leaves off um, and cutting the branches and making sure there's a good airflow through there and I'll be doing that for all of these roses but I do usually wait until about January time just so that they do start losing their leaves naturally um, and these flowers can do their thing because they're quite nice to see. Um, so that will be something that's coming up soon, probably not in this video but I um, wanted to stop here to show you this delphinium because it's unusual but really really nice to see um, and now I'm going to show you our Christmas tree. So it doesn't look like much at the moment but as it starts to get darker, which it gets dark really early now, this uh, comes on at about four o'clock and it looks so lovely in the sunset and when the garden's dark and we can look out the window and see it lighting up the whole garden. So I'm going to show you some clips of what this looks like in the evening. Um, we decided to put it here just because it's our biggest and flattest open space. Um, I don't think it would fit in the first garden so we didn't have too much of a choice as to where we put it but we're so happy with it here uh, and we've never decorated the garden for Christmas before and I think this might be the full extent of our Christmas decorations because I was meaning to put some up in the house and make a video about it but honestly I've been so burnt out so um, this is probably the full extent of our decorations this year. There's a lot of pressure to do it really perfectly um, but we're happy with this and uh, like I said it looks really lovely in the night so um, that's our Christmas tree this year. Um, now we can get started tidying up the leaves which you might be able to see behind me. I'm going to show you those. The colours are really lovely um, but it is time to clean them up so let's go and give those a tidy. Aren't these leaves amazing? I absolutely love this colour. I think this is probably the best autumn colour that we've got in the garden. Um, so this is our Acer tree. I'm not sure of the variety um, because it was here when we moved in so if anyone knows of the variety do let us know. Um, but the colour is amazing and it's completely carpeted the grass and this is going to make such a good leaf mulch. I'm going to move the leaves onto the beds with a leaf blower um, and then they will degrade down and feed the soil um, so it's a really good way of distributing nutrients from um, underneath the tree and it will pull those up and then drop them back down in the leaves from deep below into the soil uh, onto the top layer so things like our perennials can enjoy the nutrients from them as they break down but we've got um, this oak tree as well so Normally I'll probably have to do this three or four times. Uh, this is the first time I will have cleared them, um, but over the next few weeks I'm going to be coming out here a few times and blowing them off the grass. Um, but it is nice to enjoy them. They're a really lovely colour and they will look lovely on the beds as well. So I'm going to go and get my leaf blower now and we can start to tidy this up. So there you go, that's looking so much better already until tomorrow when we get loads more of these leaves coming down and I'll have to do it all again. Um, but it's quite fun, um, it's a bit therapeutic. And we've got these logs along the edge of the flower beds that will hold the leaves in there. And then they'll rot down within the next three months or so um, and give us a really lovely, oh, there's a little robin. <laughs> uh, give us a really lovely top layer on the soil um, 
keep it nice and covered, keep it mulched, help keep it frost free. And they're good for the insects to hide in as well. I used to um, collect them up and put them in a leaf bin, but I find this is so much easier and it does look quite nice on the soil. I know some people worry about it looking untidy, but I like it. I think it's a nice bit of color and you know you've uh, left some habitats out for the insects as well. But I do want to move it off the grass because it stops the grass going sludgy and turning to soil, which we struggled with before we started doing this. So I'm gonna go and put this away um, and I'll show you a few of the things that are flowering around this bit of the garden. So in case you missed it in our last video, I thought I would show you the winter clematis that's currently flowering. Um, and this is doing so well. I think it loves this leaf mulch that we're giving it in the soil. Um, and it's gonna hopefully screen this fence in the future. Uh, this one's called freckles. And then we've got two other varieties, which I'll show you as well. Um, those are a more simple flower. They're plain white, but this one has this really lovely pattern inside that looks a bit like a hellebore. Uh, and the, the coverage on this already is amazing. I only put this in last winter um, and it's huge. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get a good screening from this soon, but um, it's nice because rather than going dormant this time of year, you can see it's still putting on a lot of new growth as well as giving us these beautiful flowers. Um, so it's definitely something I want to grow more of. Um, and amazingly, we've got a few hellebores already, so I'll show you those too. So in front of me here, we have a hellebore plant that's just starting to uh, show us some flowers. Probably needs another week or so until they start opening up, but they look amazing already. And the thing I love about this is it's such a vivid pink color and you don't get a lot of color like that in the garden in those winter months. So I'm really looking forward to that one flowering properly. It's absolutely covered in flowers. Um, there's loads more on this side. It's looking really healthy, so can't wait. And then in our new hellebore bed, they're just starting to flower as well. And then the hellebores at the very first bit of the garden are always flowering because they're a variety that flowers all year. But they do look particularly nice in the winter. I don't know if there's something better about the flowers or if it's just because the surrounding um, plants die back and showcase them a bit more. But hellebores are definitely a feature of this garden through the winter as the other things all start to die back. And we've just got some really lovely autumn colours. So this, um, I've forgotten the name of this shrub, but I found this in a really overgrown bit of the garden at the top and I brought it down here because I wanted a few more structural plants rather than just soft perennials that die back. I wanted some kind of twiggy things that hold their shape a bit better. So I moved it down here and it's loving its life and now it's about to lose its leaves. It's got this really lovely yellow colour. I really can't remember the name of it, so if anyone can remind me please do it will probably come back to me after I've stopped filming this and thankfully I've already done my bulbs in this bit of the garden so I don't need to fiddle too much with the leaf mulch layer I can just leave that on there to rot down I'm not going to be adding any more bulbs now that I've done my tulips and there's already a good amount in there from last year as well um, but you can see a lot of them peeping through the soil so again it's that reassurance that in a few months uh, when winter starts to ease things will be more interesting again and we've got stuff to look forward to in spring but for my next job, I'm going to start tackling the greenhouse and the polytunnel, which need a really good clean. Um, so I'm going to go and get my tools to do that. Not sure we'll be able to get all of it done today, but we can definitely make a start. Um, maybe if we just aim to do the outside, the inside's a bit fiddlier. Um, obviously with some really large cacti in there. And the last time I tried to clean inside, I did fall over and land on one of the cacti. Um, and that's really put me off. So let's just clean the outside. I'm going to go and get my tools and we can make a start on that. The main thing I'm using is this really, really long squeegee. Um, it's got a soft end for cleaning and then a squeegee end for wiping off the excess water afterwards. And I had to get one this size because um, when you're in the greenhouse, the floor is sunken. Um, so you need, I don't know exactly how tall it is, but you need something really long to be able to clean the roof properly. So I invested in this last year. Uh, it's a really good tool, really simple tool. It doesn't overcomplicate things. I uh, got some rubber gloves because I don't really want to get my hands wet, but we'll see how we go. They probably will anyway. <laughs> um, I'm just using dish soap because I use that to clean everything. You can get some proper um, things that are meant to reduce the algae growth on the glass to stop it misting up like how it's done, but they're quite expensive. So I'm just going to do it with dish soap and I trust that that will do the job fine. I don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, got a few microfiber towels in case I need to wipe off any excess water. Uh, and I've also got a window vac just in case that's going to be easier. But to be honest, I think this will be all we need. So let's get started. So I'm keen to do this now because my perennial plants that are in this bed have all died back for the winter. So I'm not going to be damaging those. And it's before the bulbs have majorly started coming up. There's a few here or there, so I'm going to try not to stand on them. But I don't think it will be the end of the world if I do. 
Uh, there's a few fiddly bits with cleaning this greenhouse, like it does get a lot of moss in the gaps and I can't reach it up there. So I think I need to get some kind of long hook tool that I can use to unpin some of the moss. Um, but you can see the roof's quite bad, uh, covered in algae, so it'd be really good to get that cleaned. Sides aren't too bad, I think I could get away with not doing those. Um, and I just want to scrape off the old leaves up here as well. It's quite a satisfying job though, because you do notice a big difference. So I'll start with the roof and then if things drip down, um, I'll get around to cleaning those last. Let's go. So there we go, that's our, well, not entirely finished, but the outside is more or less finished. I will do the inside, but not today. Um, and then obviously we've got the small greenhouse as well, which I'm not gonna do today because it's really fiddly. I think we've only got about an hour left of daylight with these days being so short. So I think I can get the polytunnel done in that, that time. It looks like it will be a bit easier than the greenhouse. And this will be the first time I've cleaned this tunnel because we only put the plastic on it last year. But it'd be good to get some of the algae off and get some of those leaves off it as well. Um, debating leaving it a bit longer just because there are still leaves falling down but I think I'll get on with it so let's go and clean the polytunnel. <laughs> you can see the difference already um, there'll be so much more light in the tunnel just from cleaning the algae off the top which would be really good for anything that's growing in there. I did hear that the most efficient way to clean one of these is using an old duvet cover and having one person standing on either side and toing and froing as though you're playing tug of war with it. I don't think we've got a duvet cover big enough for that though maybe you'd have to tie two together but this works just fine. Maybe we'll try, try that way next year. This is definitely easier to clean than the greenhouse, less fiddly. Just going to show you how it's going. This side is completely done. I've started the front. So this side I've done from the outside and inside. But for a comparison, just so you can see the algae not sure you can see it as well on camera, but it's got a kind of green tinge to it. And then that's the, the one that I've done. It looks completely brand new after it's had a clean. And Aaron is working on this side. Shout out to Aaron for helping with this. Otherwise it would have taken me ages. This side's a bit harder to clean because we can't get the host pipe up here, but it's looking so much better already. So I'm gonna go and finish cleaning the front and then hopefully this will be done. So there we go, we've cleaned the polytunnel and the big greenhouse. I think we can get away with not cleaning the inside of the polytunnel this year because it's not too bad. Next year we'll probably have to do a proper deep clean of it. We will come back and do the small greenhouse and the shed as well because those need doing, but we don't have time because it's getting dark. Um, and I've just noticed that the Christmas tree lights have come on as well and they look really, really beautiful. I'll quickly show you around a few more things in the garden, um, but the good news is we have got more time to make these videos now. So over the next few months, we will be doing a little bit more gardening jobs, gardening tours. And if there's anything that you'd like to see, do let us know, because we'd love to know what you want to see. Um, so let's go up the garden. One of the main things I've been doing is mulching with our homemade compost. And this is made of our grass cuttings, weeding, um, the duck mess, uh, and it goes up into the compost bins. I empty them once a year in the winter and then come down here with a wheelbarrow and just distribute it across the um, soil. It looks really lovely. You can see it's more of a mulch than a finished compost, but that's completely fine. It will still add nutrients to the soil and keep the surface of the soil covered, which is what I want. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on when I do have time to get out here, but it gets dark so early. I haven't had as long as I would like to, to get on top of these things. Um, but it looks much better in here. There's a few leaves on the top that we couldn't reach. Um, it gets really tricky finishing these jobs because it gets dark around 4.30 now. And by the time I finished work, there's not an awful lot of light out here. So I would love to have some more time to be able to do these things. Um, maybe on the weekend, I'll be able to catch up a bit, but we have, I've started getting a nice thick mulch down in the tunnel. Um, um, and I have also started adding it to the raised beds as well, which I'm going to show you quickly. So again, you can see it's a mulch rather than a finished compost, but I have got it on both of our asparagus beds now. And um, I've got some on our onion bed too. 
So there's still a lot of jobs that I want to do up here over winter. I've got a few more garlic bulbs to plant, garlic cloves to plant. Um, I want to mow the lawn, but it has been consistently damp and I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, trim the edges, tidy it up a bit. And then I've got some tulip bulbs that I want to get in here too. And I really want to get on with that soon, but um, it's just been so cold and damp and miserable and I want to cut the grass. So I haven't got around to it, but I'm hopefully going to line this pathway with tulips. Um, so yeah, lots to look forward to, but um, as I said earlier, hopefully we'll be making more of these videos now that we've got a bit more time. So do stay tuned and give us a subscribe if you'd like to see how our garden develops over the months and years. So thanks for watching and see you next time.